We're back. <laughs> and we're married. Mr. and Mrs. Matching bands. It has been quite the whirlwind over two weeks, hasn't it? Yeah, it's felt like it's gone super quickly and obviously years ago since we left. Crazy, and I'm so excited to get back into it and have you guys know a little bit more about the wedding. Because it feels like such a long time since I picked up the camera. I thought I would pick it up a little bit more. But if I'm honest, we were just totally in the moment, weren't we? Yeah, we were just enjoying ourselves. We did take quite a few pictures, but they were more for our own personal enjoyment. Um, they probably will be going up somewhere. Yeah. But we didn't take them with for the intention of any platforms or anything. Yeah, it was, I'll be honest, it was really nice to just enjoy, totally immerse ourselves in this very precious time in our lives. And especially the honeymoon, but we're gonna get onto that. So we thought we'd do a really quick debrief because we only got back last night. We literally got back last night. Still quite tired. Still pretty tired. Got all the washing going on, so you probably <laughs> hear the washing machine going. But yeah, we thought we'd just have a catch up this week. The next week, wedding video is coming. Yeah, the actual video from the day. So exciting. And then I'll just catch you all up and then we'll be over the wedding and we'll be, be into our new chapter. Yeah. We're excited about that. It seems mad as well because it just feels like the weddings are such intense times and such like a big build up and then you finish and it's like, oh wow. This it's is, done. This, it, feels, it feels really like a new chapter, but exciting. I actually don't have any kind of wedding honeymoon blues. I just feel excited to be excited back. Excited about the future. Well, ask me tomorrow when I'm on my own and Ollie's at work and I may feel me. And we're looking at the master bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we left on the 7th of July. Thursday. We flew to Milan, Italy, and then we got a transfer with all of our family. So we flew with about 10 members of our family, yep. which was really nice. Um, and then we all got a transfer. Oh no, we didn't. No, 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 we we didn't. got a car. So we sent the family up in a transfer, which takes yep. about an hour 20. And then we got a little car. Uh, hire a car because then for our honeymoon we did a little um, road trip. Road trip. Talk about that later. Um, we did get confused about car though because they said it was in Bay Seven. We went to Bay Seven and there was a nice car. We thought they'd upgraded us. Like oh yeah, and we're trying to get into it. And the key didn't work. And then eventually <laughs> we realised that behind that car, also in another bay called Seven, which is a bit weird, um, was our actual car. And we've got a picture of it somewhere. You might throw it in. So embarrassing, I'll throw it in. It's Terrible like car. Tiniest, tiniest. We always get the ugliest, smallest little hire cars. So it was cute though, it was. and it felt very us because we often get that kind of car. Yeah, and um, my family decorated it, but again, we'll show you that for the honeymoon. So anyway, arrived and we were actually on the would you call it the right side of the lake? Uh, yeah, the right hand side. If you're looking at it on a map, it's the right hand side right of the lake side. in a little town called Verena. Verena. Very small, very quaint, cute. Only two really big hotels. One of which was the hotel where we had the wedding and the other was about 50 yards down the road, which was the sister hotel where we all stayed in the lead up to the wedding. Yeah, because that hotel had a swimming pool, which was amazing to be able to relax and more of a restaurant. And it was also really great because Ollie continued staying in that room. So we slept separately the night before I went over to the like bridal suite. But that little lead up was a really lovely time. We, we actually had quite a lot to do. We left it quite last minute and we wrote our vows and our speech while we were out there. But actually we were chatting about that and we think it was the best thing to do because we had this beautiful view over the lake and we had a balcony and what we did is like one of us went outside and we shut the doors um, and it was night and the lights were twinkling and Ollie was literally like, we were both sobbing but when I was inside looking at the speech I could hear him like... <laughs> <laughs> outside on the balcony right now. We had tried writing them before and it just didn't seem to be coming. We found it quite difficult, but as soon as we got over there and just spent a quiet bit of time out on the balcony, it just seemed to come so much easier. It was a sweet little moment. So we had a few days which we just prep while we were out there and um, kind of having meetings with the venue, making sure everything was sorted. Um, we booked some things quite last minute as well for the day, which we'll talk about. But then we had, we only had really two days and then our first event was a welcome meal, which was in Verena itself. So it was a walk down to the, the waterfront. At Bar Il Molo, um, which is really nice. Look down the water, we private hired, terrace Yeah, like top. a little terrace. And yeah, just sensational views. And you also have like a backdrop of the town at the back. Yeah. We did the decorating ourselves. So my mum made the tablecloth just out of some super cheap white fabric. We shipped over the vases and candles. the candles. The florist dropped off some flowers the morning of 
that you separated out into the vases. Yeah, and I did all the flowers, and that was quite like a nice little moment. And we made together. our own, um, what were they, like details sheet from the table setting. Yeah, it was like a welcome sheet, so it had all the events again, and then it had on the back, it had like a timeline of the day, I can show you guys all of that now. We did all of that ourselves, and we printed it the last day that it could come, and I was worried that it wouldn't. Yeah, we cut that real tight. There was like one or two mistakes, but I was like, Phew. Nobody will know. They were fine. They <laughs> yeah, were. they looked really good. We put like sweet little ribbons around them. Yeah, and then that night we had all pizza, of course. Steak. Oh, just great Italian food. Pizza. Aperols, tiramisu, panna cotta. Yeah, so we gave everybody like a choice of some of the menu. And then your dress was from. Oh, yeah, my dress that night was from a company AGE, which is, I got it all the way from Australia. It was in the sale and I loved it. Yeah. And you looked pretty dapper. My, I was wearing a, I chose Ollie's outfit. Yeah, you basically chose Ollie's outfit. <laughs> I was wearing a green linen suit uh, or jacket from Suit Supply and a pair of pleated trousers from Pinny Palmer. Yeah, and typical man with all of the wedding things, the shirt was we were packing the day before leaving. We left early in the morning, the early, next day. Early in the morning. And it was probably, no, it wasn't probably, I know that it was about quarter to five. <laughs> And Ollie goes, you had said, you had said, is there anything you haven't got? Have you forgotten anything? And I was like, mm, might have forgotten the pocket squares for the groomsmen. And yeah, you, you explained to me that that was like my fault and I probably should have got it done anyway, which I really should have. I like, you know, typical, you don't want to stereotype here, but male, female thing. I've been so organised with the wedding, but I just couldn't organise Ollie. Every day, nearly I would ask him, have you ordered this? Have you got your like outfit sorted? I, I picked his outfit. All he had to do was order it. Not all of it. She picked like the look. Pretty much. You did pick the actual jacket. And all he had to do was order it and get it done. Did he? Oh. No. I, I tried like a few days, a few, yeah, literally like a few days before. Anyway, no, anyway, we're, anyway boring we're boring now. That shirt for the night before, we went in at five o'clock to our local town to pick him a shirt. He just like picked it. it was just yeah, like, it wasn't yeah, we'll a perfect shirt, but it was fine. Yeah, and we didn't get pocket. You got one pocket I got square, one yeah. pocket square because they didn't have any more in stock. So I had one, but no one else did. <laughs> anyway, none of like, honestly, none of these details matter in the end. And I think it does kind of show that I feel like a lot of our wedding, we organised very last minute because of the events that happened leading up to it. It's fine. Like, and honestly, like none of it matters on the day. You just, you just don't care, do you? No, you're just there having fun. As long as you're as marrying as, the right as person. Soon, as, soon as, as soon as we sat down, we had some food in front of us, everybody had drinks. Yeah. And it was just such a good night. Yeah. yeah. So that was the night before. And then the next day we were obviously separate. I was up at eight and from then on it was go, go, go. Cause I just moved into that room. So like steaming, my mum came in, helped me steam my dress, bless my dad. He was like helping tie all the menus. And yeah, it, it was like a little bit frantic, but at the same time, really lovely. There weren't like too many people there. It's like excited busyness. Yeah, and I could see the florist. I took like a little video. I could see her like doing the flowers down there. Yeah, so it took quite a while getting ready. Her and makeup arrived about 11. Um, I did get my hair and makeup um, done by people locally, unfortunately. We, we had like a number of hurdles, didn't we? Oh, I had so many. <laughs> I felt like we had the worst, worst luck leading up to the wedding. I'm sure lots of people have the same thing. I think we've spoken to so many people, we met the nicest couple on honeymoon, which I'm... We'll I'm get <laughs> yeah, 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 we're going around, but we were just talking about how, you know, so every wedding something happens. Um, yeah. So we had a few things in the lead up and then on the day your... Well, the day before my day before makeup, makeup artist cancelled um, and another lady came, but it was all a bit like, a, a little bit fishy. I don't know what was going on there. So I did have my hair and makeup done, but it wasn't by who I wanted. And then... The officiant emailed the morning of saying that she thinks she had COVID. Someone had said that she had seen the day before that they had uh, tested positive. So she went for a PCR test and said, look, if I can't make it, I found a replacement, everything's gonna be fine. But then we we're on tent hooks. I was on tent hooks because we weren't telling Laura at this point um, until we found out if it was positive or negative. It turned out to be positive. So she said that the replacement would be coming to do everything, which is fine. They handled it really well. The replacement was texting me to say 
she's been to the, the venue before, she's absolutely fine, she's got the um, order of service and what was being said. But it was just one of those things like on the on the morning, it was like, we can't stress about it. There's nothing yeah. we can do. It's one of those things that's a shame because when we went over to Lake Homo last year, we'd met Rita, who was the official that we were meant to have and had coffee. Kind of like bonded with her and had like a conversation. She knew a bit about us. So we were I like I was looking forward to seeing her at the aisle. Um and so Ollie did end up actually my dad came into the bridal suite and <laughs> in front of everybody was like I don't want to panic anybody, but, and we were all like, oh no. <laughs> and he was like, the officiant can't make it. And everybody was like, oh, what? Um, thinking like there just wasn't gonna be an officiant. And then he was like, but there's a replacement. And everybody was like, oh, okay. Yeah, um, yeah but you wanted to let me know, didn't you? Just so that yeah, I we, knew when I was walking down yeah, the aisle. We didn't want you coming down the aisle and then just seeing a random person stood at the, um, at the end and thinking, who are they? <laughs> What's um, gonna go on? <laughs> Do they do they know me? Do they know my name? That's always a worry. There's always so many like vicars and celebrants who say the wrong name. But yeah. she got it right. She did get it she right. Did, yeah. She did. She was good. good. Job. Yeah. And what happened after that? So we had yeah hair and makeup got ready. Lots of photos. Had a wonderful videographer and photographer, which will hopefully you'll be seeing all Have of that content. Vid wedding video next week. Yeah, yeah. We said wedding video next week, and then it's kind of I'll be honest, a bit of a blur. Like a magical blur. As everyone says, it just flies by and we tried every moment we could to really sort of That's take that. ourselves out of the moment and just look and think and absorb what was going on. But it was so difficult because we kept getting like little chances and then we're on to the next thing or seeing someone talking to people. Um, Despite so yeah. giving like so much time in the timeline, it's still, and so did we say our wedding was at four o'clock? So we had a lot of time to get ready, but it was just like this manic rush at the end. Um, and everything changes a little bit, like the photographer asked me, I was upstairs and the photographer wanted to take some photos in this downstairs room, but all the guests were waiting in a room just in front of that room. So they had to like move all the, the guests, like the photographer was very good, but she also like knew what she wanted. Um, so all of the guests like moved and I came down and then I went back up. It, it, it was kind of like this, I, I felt like- Theatrical show. Yeah, felt a little bit like I was being led, but in a nice way. Um, and then the one panic that I had because of that was obviously the heat. And I was so worried that everybody was gonna be hot. Yeah. That that was everybody a, was fine. Yeah, like, that was a big concern. But we, again, the venue on the day were really good. They were bringing us um, chilled water, um, making sure we're in the shade. It? it was- Is it 28, 29? Yeah, at that point. No, I think it was warmer than that when we actually had the ceremony, though. Maybe about 30. So like, yeah, like I the low 30s. I think the temperature from the day was supposed to be 29. On the forecast, but I think on the day it was a little bit low warmer. 30s, yeah. Um, but Lake Como is, it's like, I'll say it's like a cool, because then we went on to our honeymoon and it's they've got like a lovely breeze. I think there are different, like, especially with humidity and stuff, I'd say Lake Como is quite cool. It felt cool, yeah, it felt felt cooler than it. the temperature said. It, yeah. The lake has a really nice cooling breeze on it and I think being slightly higher in the mountains, it, lower humidity, so it was comfortable. Yeah, um, yeah, for a July. Lot more, a lot more comfortable than we thought it was going to be. I kept my jacket and my bow tie on till half Late. 10, 11. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, so Ollie was waiting at the end of the aisle, and it was, I mean, the ceremony area is just so magical, isn't it? There's, yeah, the... Oh, there's the washing machines going off, just as I'm going to say about the ceremony area. Let me go and get that. Um, I walked down the aisle with my dad to Ed Sheeran Thinking Out Loud on String Quartet. Again, mm. I'll never forget. They were amazing as well, they were weren't really they? were really good, yeah. The music for that was, yeah makes me, now every time I listen to it, I'm gonna feel really emotional. Um, we had our lovely ceremony, which you'll see, you'll actually hear our vows in the wedding video. I had the lovely confetti walking down the aisle, and we walked out, back down to the greatest day yep. playing, which also was lovely too. Yeah. Then we went up some steps to the aperitif hour where we had like Prosecco and nibbles. Chimains and aperols. Yeah, and we had a few family photos at that time and also a few couples portraits, but the photographer was like, lighting, lighting not, wasn't great. Like, great right now because it's still quite harsh. And then it was up for dinner. Like, I don't, it went so quick in a so, way, didn't so it? Quick. It went yeah. so quick. So we had the string quartet playing also throughout the aperitifs and we chose mostly afterwards like some very upbeat um kind of like pop songs it's quite like 
Bridgerton feels like yeah. modern songs but um by a string a quartet so. yeah yeah which was really lovely so it wasn't too like formal it was songs that you knew and then up for dinner we had our speeches so we came in to sign seal delivered into the wedding meal and we did a speech together we did slightly unusual um but yeah we thought it was right we had everyone there we both wanted to thank people um so yeah we gave our speech and then we had a speech from your father my father and then the best man jj your brother yeah which was my brother they were really lovely yeah yeah um the nice thing is our videographer actually doesn't just do um a like highlight video she also gives us the whole speeches and everybody was mic'd up so you can hear them yeah an extended cut which yeah that one probably won't be making it online that's just for us yeah um yeah to keep and then the food Food, which was oh. amazing. Yeah, the food was, um, a, the food was a big part. Of it. <laughs> yeah, the food was a big part of the day, um, and it was really good. How many courses was it in the end? Seven. So There's two starters. We had a pasta, a chicken, then we had a fish, fish and a meat, meat dish, and then desserts. Then desserts, which was like a buffet, and then cake. The cake was the cake was so good. I mean, like I wish that we could have it again. Um, and we actually love very last minute just as the sun was setting, which was why we skipped a little bit of the meal, we booked a boat trip. Out onto the lake at sunset. And the timing could not have been better. No. The lighting is beautiful. And actually it was a really good time for, obviously the, the photographer and videographer were with us, but they were at the front of the boat. We were at the back. And actually it was a really nice time for us just to sit together and quietly talk. Have a moment. And have a moment about, and just suck it all in. Um, because up until that point, even through dinner, you're talking to people, it, time's flying by. So it was a really nice time just to get away and kind of sort of pinch yourself moment. Yeah, I think as well, like, you do feel a lot, I thought that anybody was really, but you feel a bit like as a bride and groom, like everybody's looking at you all the time and you're very much like center of attention. I think it was the first bit, even though we had the videographer and photographer, that that weight was kind of off and it just felt like us. And so many people say that, like have a moment no matter where it is or when it is. But we literally went off on a boat. <laughs> <laughs> it was enforced alone time. It yeah. Yeah, that was I think both of our like one of our favourite parts of the day, yeah. other than like saying vows and stuff and speeches. That was Yeah, definitely that was favourite part. Yeah. I mean all of it had a really good bit. The ceremony I know, was so great. Hard to pick. Having and... having dinner with everyone was great. The boat was great and then like the partying and dancing afterwards was really good fun as well. Yeah, so um, we came back and everybody was coming down to cut the cake. We had like a quick minute to cool down. And then we came down. I don't think we had chosen a music. Our DJ was amazing. I really loved him. Yeah, he was really, really good. Just one, one of those people that you like immediately click with. And um, I remember as we were walking up, he was like, you had a lot of Coldplay on your list. Should I play something from Coldplay? And we were just like, yeah. Yeah, we, had, we hadn't picked a specific song for the cake cutting area. Um, but he just... He chucked a couple of choices in here and there, and it was great. Yeah, um, so we cut yeah, the cake. Really That's another one of my favourite bits. Yeah, there's a really, yeah, there's some great, I think there'll be some great photos, but there's definitely a great clip in the video um, yeah. of us cutting the cake. Um, and we had a little toast down there, and then it was upstairs to our first dance, which didn't quite go as planned. Definitely didn't go as planned. I think by then we'd had a few drinks. We were like happy and merry. The one good thing is that we were just laughing the whole way. Just having a good time. It. We had yeah. a really good time. We did our little first dance under the twinkly lights. We had like um, the festoon lights under the, well, between the like two veranda Awning things. and the pagoda. Yeah. And then, and then we danced. Then we danced. Magical. It really was, wasn't it? Like, it's it's a funny thing. If any of you have had a wedding, I think we did feel, because we are probably both introverts slightly. Yeah, definitely. I think after, immediately after the wedding, you do have this like wedding anxiety where you feel a little bit like, did everybody enjoy it? Like what didn't go to plan? You like think about all the things that didn't happen. But we're now a little bit more removed from it where we're like, oh, that was just so, yeah. like just the best day. And we can really, I don't know, like lap up. Yeah, All and it was so nice as well that we went on a honeymoon strike afterwards. So we finished from the... Yeah, so the wedding day, after the wedding day, so our next event was a boat trip. I'll be honest, the night of the wedding night, I was like, why did we choose a boat trip? <laughs> <laughs> the next day, after everybody's been drinking, because uh, there was a lot of wine and just general drinking on the day. But we had our boat trip at 11 and it was like a farewell boat trip. We all went around the lake. Collected us from the little waterfront in front of Verena where we'd had the night, the meal the night before. 
took us around the centre, saw some of the lovely villas and sites around the centre of the lake. Yeah, they did like a little mic thing where they were like, and on your left. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it, but everybody was chatting, yeah. I don't think they were really listening in. So yeah, it was just a nice nice little last event and then we could say goodbye to everybody after that, which was a nice as well. So it was nice because it all kept, yeah, night. you weren't saying goodbye in night, you weren't saying goodbye in like bits and pieces, it was just everyone at one place. Farewell. Um, yeah, and then we went off. Before you're going to do a video about your dress uh, later yes. point, aren't you? And oh yeah, so the the like general the dress code was black tie for the wedding day. We kept optional. It optional, so if anyone didn't have one or they felt like they were going to be a bit hot, then they could wear something different. Um, but quite a lot of people did, and everyone managed to stick to it for quite a long time, really, and we were impressed. Ollie looked amazing in this tuxedo. You so look handsome. In the dress. So handsome, yeah. I love a tuxedo on you. Yeah. Um, tux was from Isabelle's. Shoes were from Loke. I'll try and like, maybe but. we'll do a Q&A video or I'll do a Q&A video and if there's any details that you see from the wedding video or the photos or any questions that you want to ask, I'll try and let you know where anything came from or any, any other questions you might have. But yeah, that was pretty much our wedding. That was our wedding. And then we hopped in the car a little hire car, which... Um, My mum got this sign that said, just married Mr and Mrs. Um, and she got white balloons, white which balloons. had little ribbon on them saying, what did they say? Something I like... I got them somewhere. Yeah, like red wedding ribbon with a little yeah. quote over it. So we drove off in a little white hire car with our decorations on. And then we travelled a little distance down the lake and we checked into another hotel, which was a very different vibe. It was super modern super clean and it was just perfect we said actually everywhere we picked for not quite the right not for not the reason we picked it just turned out to be the best decision it had it was all remote control so the curtains were just like blackout and done by remote all the lights were so we were exhausted when we turned up and we just literally like dropped in the room pulled the curtains and had a nap pulled the curtains ordered room service and just sat there and chatted everything through and yeah. yeah, it was perfect for what it was. We opened all our cards there as well, which yeah. was really nice. And then we drove on to Tuscany, which was the most... I'm not going to go on about our honeymoon too much, but it... We didn't know what to do for our honeymoon, and I think it can feel very overwhelming. You've planned a wedding, and now you have to also plan a holiday all at the same time. But I think, as Ollie mentioned earlier, we were so, so glad that we did it straight after the wedding. So many people say don't because you'll be too tired, but for us it was the best thing we could do. We were in this like little bubble, obviously we're super happy. You're on cloud nine, you've just got married, and we just really wanted to soak up. We wanted to soak it up, but also I think, because as you said, we're both quite introverts, it was quite overwhelming. Yeah. So we really needed that time to sort of like be on our own, process all the emotions, and just kind of, settle into it yeah yeah it was just perfect to have that time and also not having to take a flight just hopping in the car driving um driving in Italy was a breeze so pleasant and we just seemed to have it despite the wedding having loads of hurdles leading up to it like when it came after that we it was like it so seemed like everything easy. just went perfectly yeah um, so yeah we drove down to Tuscany um absolutely beautiful like we thought we'd love it there and we did um, the most sensational place I think we've ever stayed. It was called uh, Borgo Pignano and everything about it, the Tuscan sunsets, the food, the hotel room, the staff. staff. The staff were amazing. Um, and a lovely guy called Gigi welcome us and then from all the time. God, I'm getting emotional just like talking about <laughs> it. Was, it was like you think of a honeymoon as being the most fabulous stay you've had and it really was yeah. for us. Not just because of the hotel, but I think, yeah, they looked after us on our honeymoon they as well. Really they they us. booked us the most amazing table um, in the restaurant and- We had a horseback riding. Um, yeah. Yeah, I've done like a little video clip on Instagram of it and it was, yeah. I, I, it's one of those things though, like obviously we were very in the moment and it was our honeymoon, so we, <laughs> we thought it was we fabulous. Thought it was um, yeah, it was just lovely. We had like the, our first ever couple's massage yeah. um, and facial, which was so good. We met a lovely other couple over there who were also on honeymoon. Yeah. Um, they were really nice. Um, yeah, they just got married and we kind of like debriefed with each other and saw them That was really day nice and actually, yeah. And, and everybody was really friendly there, like everybody who was staying there, we like mostly had a chat had to. Had a chat to. A lot of them. Food just generally croissants in the morning. 
of joke. It's, it's like some of our best food that we've ever had. The most fluffy little croissants, <laughs> but they have like a, a slightly sweet glaze over the top. Incredible. Yeah, literally like a movie. It felt like a movie when yeah. we were there, didn't it? And just the views and the place and also their ethos, like they grow all their own vegetables because we had the breakfast with the horses in the vegetable garden and the lavender, they have lavender. like the soaps and the bath salts and yeah. It was really great. <laughs> it was really great. And then we moved on to Rome, which at the time we were really worried about. We are moving into Rome when the weather forecast was saying that Italy was going to hit 37, 38, basically the same time that England had a huge heat wave. Heat wave. Italy was kind of having the same thing. They were all saying this is unseasonably warm. Mm. And it was, they were saying like recommend like don't go out in the midday. And we were heading into Rome to go sightseeing. Um, which, but we loved it! Yeah, it was great. We, we loved, loved, loved Rome. Rome. Yeah, yeah, we really loved it. In fact, we're just jealous of every Italian because we just feel like they've got a much better lifestyle than we do. Yeah. Rome was, in a way, like, the whole trip was quite overwhelming. But, like, Rome, we were so shocked at how, in such a small area, they had so many ruins and So much museums, rich history. It's, so much history. Yeah. And it was just next to, like, a huge road. It, it's a bit of a weird juxtaposition. But yeah. But... We walked around, we basically said we haven't got much time, so we're just going to do one or two things really well, and everything else we'll come back and see. We did more time. than we expected, actually. The hotel, again, was amazing. I would highly recommend. Best bed we've ever stayed in. Oh, so good. Yeah, we did upgrade our room there a little bit so that we could really chill out if we needed to, and we did do that. So on some of the days, we got up quite early, and then in the middle of the day, we went back and just had a nap and relaxed. And, and then headed out, headed out in the evening, and then stayed out relatively late. The pasta. The ice cream. We had in a couple of places in Rome which were just outstanding. Both yeah. of them very reasonably priced, like they were pretty cheap. Yeah, um, I literally typed into Google, cheap places to eat pasta in Rome, <laughs> and two came up, which, yeah. We spent those, they're brilliant. Again, I highly recommend, I will definitely put links, put links, put links, links into well. those. Um, yeah, so we went around the Colosseum and the Roman Forum and the hill, Planty Hill. I can yeah, never planting, say it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. hill. Um, we were only there two nights, so it went really quickly. But yeah, then we'll be back. We got a little taxi to the airport, dropped off the hire car, and came home. Sad. Excited though. I know. It was yeah. It was obviously the most special time of our lives, really, wasn't it? Yeah. Like we said, each stage of that honeymoon trip, we kind of felt was perfect we had the relaxation in tuscany and then as we were kind of like finished with that we were ready to go see some stuff rome was just brilliant um it's really infused that that infused us we we have come back feeling really like we're ready to get on we're ready to start the renovation again we really want to travel more and we really want to go out and about more it's something that we feel like especially over the last few years like everybody we just haven't had the chance but being in italy we just can't it's really giving us again. that spark back yeah, yeah. So now we're married. Now we're married. What next? A puppy. puppy? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, my squeaky chair. Um, yeah. That's yeah. probably going to be the most exciting thing. Puppy. We're not quite there yet. But we'll anyway. Start yeah. Hopefully a lot of exciting things to come in the next few months. Can't wait to share a little bit more. Can't wait to see our wedding photos. We should get those back tomorrow. Yep. Yeah. We're still kind of like on that high from it all, but I'm sure, I'm sure we'll come down. Let us know, guys, if you've been married. When does the when do the like wedding honeymoon blues hit? <laughs> so that I can forecast for when that's gonna be. Maybe we'll book something in for that. Anyway, have we rambled enough? Hopefully, you've been caught up a little bit though on what we had planned for so long and where we've been the last two weeks. But yeah, we're back now. We'll share a little bit of the wedding in the next few weeks, but we're actually really wearing and ready to go. <gasps> Just look down. Oh, pot pottery. We're gonna share. <laughs> little unboxing. <laughs> little unboxing. We thought that we'd share um, some of our treasures, some of our finds over in Italy. So these are literally coming out of the suitcase. We don't know if we've made it back in one piece. Who knows? I think this is my favourite. I think you should open that. I think that's your favourite. Oh, yeah, this is my favourite. Oh, will it focus? So, this is the guy that we got these from. Most adorable setup. We should have got Paramethyst. some more, shouldn't we? Yeah, who um, you could like see where he was. Where his like workshop was there too. His dog was on the floor. 
I chose this one, which I already know where it's gonna go. It's gonna sit in our bedroom, you know, like the lobby area as you walk in on the console. I've already got a little home for it. I just love these colors. So stunning. All of these colors were really nice. Yeah. Yeah, and I love of, the detail and the white. It was yeah, the first that. shop we found. I'm kind of, I think we're both feeling like we should have bought some more because yeah. it was the first, we thought we would find others that were of equal, but these were the best. So we're really glad we did get some. And I got a little oil lamp. Yeah, which is something that I feel like we don't have much of in the UK. No, you don't see them that often, but I thought it'd be so nice because we, we really like candles, but sometimes candles, they can melt down, they get a bit messy, but that I think will be really nice. We can just light it in the evening. It will give a bit of um, warmth and ambience to a room. He was a lovely guy, wasn't he? So you put like the lamp oil in there and you burn it, but then you can put some like lavender oil around the top of the lid to give it a little bit of fragrance. We are excited to like this, aren't we? Yes. Lamp oil is on its way. All of these were made in Tuscany. I couldn't help but pick this one up. We have a bit of a theme for like summer finds that we find abroad in white and blue at this jug. I just love the design of it as well. Um, and all of this, um, where, what time was this one in? I can't remember now. We'll put anyway, a picture up. We'll remember, that was from there and that was lovely. Uh, we also got a lovely little alabaster pot. Um, the area of Tuscany and that region is well known for alabaster so we felt like we had to get something to... Yeah we would have liked to have got a lot more but because we had gone on our wedding we had just like a lot of stuff didn't we? Yeah. We, t um, My parents thankfully took back one bag for us which had the wedding dress and the tuxedo which by the way we did hire a seat on the aeroplane to get it over there on the way there but then we put it, we took three suitcases out and on the way back, we put it in there. I forgot these. From the same shop as the jug, we also got these for summer, like oil and that kind of thing. And then <coughs> these two were from the same town as the jug and the little bowls, but from a different shop. And two just very cute little uh, coffee cups. Yeah, I feel like a little espresso, because we don't have any. No, we've got none that are like nice art style project. We've got some yeah. just like very utilitarian ones. ones. And we wouldn't be going anywhere with you on holiday if you hadn't bought a spoon. I love collecting. Nothing special, but they're just just a spoon from wherever. We got one in Mexico. We've got some from our other trips. They're so nice and they're so much cheaper, especially like, like Dalesford sells a lot of this kind of stuff. But it's so much cheaper when you go, obviously from where they're importing it from. Um, but yeah. And a bit of olive wood spoon. I like bringing a spoon back from every travel. It's like my fridge magnet. <laughs> oh, I'm so happy we got all of that out. It makes me miss it more now. Yeah, I know. Anyway, I'm gonna go uh, so that you don't have to listen to my squeaky chair anymore. We'll see you in the next one. Remember to pop any questions for Q&A videos down below. Yeah. And we'll see you soon. See you soon. Bye. I'm married. We're married. Husband and wife. Come on, husband. <laughs>